everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chantel Smith. I'm the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Inclusive Communities within the Honors College at the University of Maryland. Um, on behalf of the Honors College, we just want to say congratulations for your acceptance to UMD and your invitation to the Honors College. We're like so excited for you during this time. Um, so as most of you may know, we've been offering a chance for you guys to hear from the staff and students who represent our eight unique programs this week. Um, we're hoping that this information that you're learning will help you as you're determining which of the programs you're most interested in, in order for you to complete your program prefacing form, which is due February 19th. So in tonight's session, we're going to be focusing on our interdisciplinary business honors, which we're about to learn about now. And then following that, we'll um, hop over and learn about university honors. So while we encourage you to send in your questions through the Q&A feature, we kindly ask that you hold off until the end of the presentation, just in case your questions get addressed during the presentation. Um, and then afterwards, we'll open it up for Q&A. Um, this is being recorded, just so you know. So um, I will also have this on the website afterwards and by, next, by early next week. Um, and I'll also be sending out an email with the links as well. So if you miss something or you want to go back and review something, um, you'll have that to do so. So to kick things off, I'll go ahead and pass the mic over so you can hear more about our IBH program. All right. Thank you, Chantel. And welcome, everyone. I will go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. See the presentation OK? Yes, excellent. Um, my name is Liz Galvin. I am part of the IBH team, and we're excited to have this opportunity tonight to talk to you a little bit about our program. Uh, my colleague Jillian Cordial is joining me as well, and then we have some current IBH students who you'll get to be introduced to shortly, but Jillian and I will go ahead and introduce ourselves now. Again, my name is Liz Galvin. I use she, her pronouns, and I serve as the Associate Director for the Interdisciplinary Business Honors Program. Um, I have worked at the University of Maryland for uh, about 14 years now. I also attended Maryland as an undergraduate, and I was in the Honors College as a student, so very much a proud turf and excited for you all to be starting your potential journey at Maryland. Um, currently in my role with IBH, I manage the daily operations of the program. I lead the admission process each year. I help support students in terms of their curriculum in IBH and their extracurricular activities. And I am excited to have Jillian introduce herself to you all as well. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jillian Cordial. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the program coordinator for IBH. I'm very, very excited to welcome you all. I came to the University of Maryland in 2020. I'm also a proud Terp. We're so excited that you're here with us. Um, a couple things that I do include academic advising. I also am responsible for planning our extracurricular events and I do our marketing and communications. So welcome. All right. Thank you, Jillian. We will go ahead and jump in. So to start tonight, uh, Jillian and I will be sharing an overview of the program. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we do have some current students and we will go ahead and turn things over to them and they'll have a chance to show you around Prince Frederick Hall, which is the home of IBH. Uh, before we get started, I would love to know a little bit more about who we have in the room as it is. Uh, if you can use the raise hand feature or if you have your video on, go ahead and raise your hand. I'm curious how many of you have been able to visit campus in person? Has anyone been to, yep, I see some hands, okay. People on video are raising hands too. Okay, a good number of you, that's great. Has anyone, oh, they're still going up, nice. Uh, next question, has anyone seen Prince Frederick Hall before? Great. But I was curious if anyone had already had the opportunity. Um, and for the students, how many of you have done something related to business during high school, whether it's a class or an extracurricular activity? Okay, I see a lot of hands going up. Excellent. Well, that helps explain um, why you might potentially be interested in joining us in IBH. So 
Uh, we will get started. You are welcome to ask questions. And as Chantal mentioned at the end, we will have reserved time for Q&A as well. Uh, but feel free as we go along uh, to keep those in mind so that we can respond um, towards the end of the session for you. Um, so IBH is the newest program under the Honors College. We're currently in our second year. So the first cohort of students joined us in fall 2022, and they are currently sophomores in their final semester of the program. We have a number of them to talk to you about their experiences tonight. Um, our second cohort joined us this past fall in 2023, so we have full enrollment for the first time uh, this year, and we aim for about 60 to 70 students per cohort, so um, currently this year we have about 120 IBHers in the program. IBH is a partnership between the Honors College and the Smith School of Business, and it was created from the vision of the Dean of the Smith School, Dean Konana, who wanted to engage the most talented UMD students who are interested in exploring business. You probably noticed that interdisciplinary is in our name and it's very important to us here in IBH. Uh, we welcome students from all majors who are interested in learning about business. And we definitely take a multidisciplinary approach in terms of designing our courses, selecting the students to join each cohort, the faculty who teach in the coursework and also our extracurricular activities. It was really exciting to welcome our first two cohorts, and we're very much looking forward to having cohort three join us this fall. In looking at the first two cohorts, these are some details on the students who have joined the program so far. Um, we value diversity in IBH, and we have a quite diverse student body, both in terms of student backgrounds and also in their academic majors. Uh, a little under half of our students um, are majoring in business fields within the Smith School. So it's about 50% business majors and 50% kind of across campus. There are definitely some larger populations uh, amongst the students who are not majoring in business. So uh, we have about 30 students who are majoring in the engineering and computer science fields. And then the remaining students are pretty widely distributed and representative of the fields that are on campus. So we have a number of biology students. Um, and then we have some interesting ones like music performance, uh, kinesiology. We still have some undecided majors who are deciding what the right academic path for their major is. Uh, but we welcome, as we said, any major, as long as you have that interest in exploring business and how it might connect to your chosen field. Uh, that's really what IBH is all about. In talking about the curriculum aspect of the IBH program, we have a five course curriculum that totals 15 credits across the freshman and sophomore year. Um, the first four courses of the curriculum are taken in sequence. So numbers one to four on your screen that starts in the fall of freshman year and goes through the spring of sophomore year. Um, all of the IBH courses are highly interactive and they involve a lot of hands-on learning and group work. So in each of the first three courses, students complete about two to three projects per semester. Um, each project is a team project where they work with a group of their IBH peers. The teams rotate for each project so students have the opportunity to work with a higher number of their peers on those small groups and uh, with a variety of student majors on the team. So they have that interdisciplinary aspect to them. Um, in terms of the first course, the future of work, that's the fall freshman course. Uh, it introduces students to business considerations that impact work across all disciplines. Uh, so questions explored are things like, are hierarchies dead? Or what will the future of work look like considering factors such as remote work and you know, how the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the workplace. Uh, in the second course, the future of data or the future of analysis, students consider how business is being shaped by the increased use of, today, of data in today's world. So course topics include things like AI, uh, data bias and data privacy. One of the group projects in that second course uh, is to have each team select a streaming service, so a Netflix or a Disney Plus, and examine the user agreement. We all sign when we sign up for those streaming services, but nobody really reads it, right? Because it's about 50 pages long. Uh, so in their teams, they actually looked through the whole agreement and looked at what data is being collected when you're watching shows on that streaming service and what does the company do with your data once they've collected it. 
So those are a few examples from the freshman year. And then moving into sophomore year, the third course, Business and Deliberation, uh, is looking at diversity, equity, and inclusion in the business world. So students in that course examine case studies of real world organizations, and they also completed a project where they selected a, a real small business and put together a DEI toolkit to help that business uh, improve their DEI efforts. Finally, in the spring of sophomore year, students take our capstone project course. So that course is being offered for the first time right now with our first cohort. Um, students work on a semester long project in the capstone and the project is sponsored by a company. Uh, the company provides a problem that they'd like students to work on. Uh, at this point in the semester, the students were just assigned to their teams this week and they're about to get started with their projects. We have 10 projects for the semester. So we're anticipating about five to six students on each team. Uh, at the end of the semester, that will kind of culminate in a capstone presentation, which will be a celebration uh, at the end of cohort one second year. The fifth course is an elective requirement. So students have the opportunity to take that at any point, the, whichever semester it works best for them. Uh, there are a variety of opportunities to complete the elective course. It does need to be a three credit course. It could be uh, an elective on campus. So some courses that have been proposed and approved by our leadership team include things like business law or um, computational finance. So something interdisciplinary, but that relates to business. Another option for the elective is to participate in an IBH study abroad program, which I'll talk about in just a minute. And then another option is if a student has a summer internship experience, they can complete the summer internship. And then when they return to campus in the fall, we have an IBH internship reflection course. So the internship plus the reflection course can complete the elective requirement as well. Uh, in terms of general education credit, that might be a question you have. Uh, courses one through three do include general education credits for our students. So that definitely takes care of a good number of your requirements. If you have any questions, I'm happy to talk a little more about that. So that sums up the course room experience for IBH. Uh, outside the classroom, we definitely prioritize experiential learning and extracurricular activities. So some of the themes of those activities are community building, professional development, leadership, industry engagement, and global experiences. In terms of professional development, we definitely want to prepare our IBHers for their internships and future careers. So that's part of the reason we have those group projects in the classes to help practice public speaking skills, teamwork, communication, and all those skills we know that employers are looking for. Uh, community building, we typically do within Prince Frederick Hall a number of events each semester. Uh, our students say that the community of IBH is one of their uh, favorite aspects of the program, and we're really proud of the community that we've built over the past two years. And then another opportunity for leadership, uh, the picture here is from a trip that we took this past October. We were able to take this team of students to the University of Nebraska, and they competed in a case competition. Uh, so opportunities like that are provided through the IBH program for students to further their skills, learn more about leadership, and interact with students uh, from other honors programs. Industry engagement takes advantage of our location near the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, this picture is from a field trip to Protivity that we took this year, and we definitely have been engaging with a number of companies. We have a field trip this semester scheduled in a few weeks to visit uh, Pepsi's location that's near campus, so engaging with industry and helping students have those professional connections. And then I mentioned IBH study abroad, so the global experiences piece. Uh, just last month, I co-led the inaugural IBH study abroad program during winter break. We took 23 students for Fran to France for 10 days, and we were able to explore the impact of culture on doing business, looking at differences between the U.S. and France. Um, we did a number of site visits with local companies, in, started in the Paris area, and then we spent the last three days in the Normandy area. We're able to visit the port there, which is one of the, I think they said the third largest in Europe in terms of um, connecting goods, you know, across the region. We also were able to do a cultural visit to the Normandy beaches. So it was a really exciting experience. I enjoyed it. The students enjoyed it. And we're already talking about what the destination might be uh, for January 
uh, next year. So that will definitely be an annual opportunity for the IBHers. Right. And at this point, I will turn things over. Thank you for listening to my overview. And we'll transition a little bit into community and then to our current students. And I'll let Jillian take the lead. Yes. So the community is really the heart of the IBH program. And so we wanted to share just a few pictures from the activities in this year. we can go ahead and go to the next slide here. Uh, so Liz mentioned that we really try and take advantage of our location being so close to the nation's capital. So here is uh, the freshman cohort visiting Washington, D.C. in front of the Washington Monument. And then this is our sophomore cohort, uh, really trying to develop that sense of belonging, doing some team building exercises to get to know each other. And then here is a picture of Honors Convocation, which you will all be able to come to. It's essentially a really big welcome to all of the new uh, freshmen students in the Honors College. And lastly, one of our students is pictured here, Faith LeBron. You're actually gonna hear from her in just a moment, receiving award for some of the wonderful service um, and hard work she's put in with our program. And now on to the living piece. So IBH is a living learning program. Um, and so IBHers reside in Prince Frederick Hall. So Prince Frederick Hall opened in fall of 2014. It is home to three honors programs, including ACES, the um, cybersecurity program, DCC, the design program, and IBH. We have classroom and event spaces that we frequently utilize. Um, and it is important to note that IBH students are required to live with uh, the IBH community in Prince Frederick Hall during their first year, and you have the option to continue within your second year. And now I will go ahead and pass it to some of our students. Great. Thank you, Jillian. Hi, everyone. My name is Faith LeBrun. I am a sophomore. I'm in cohort one of IBH, the inaugural cohort. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm a finance and information systems double major. So some of my involvements on campus, um, I'm a Bannerkirke scholar. I'm also involved in a second honors college that you can apply to during your first year, which is called the Quest Honors Program. Um, I serve on the Dean Student Advisory Council in the Smith School of Business, and I work for the Office of Experiential Learning. And I'm also interested in consulting, so I am the I'm a principal consultant with Snyder Consulting Group. Um, but outside of all of those involvements, some things that I enjoy are painting, hiking, reading, eating tacos. And I just added boxing to this this morning because I took my first boxing class today and I am so passionate about it. So it's going to be my new hobby. Um, and in the pictures, you can see some of my friends. If you look at the skiing picture, actually, those are all of my friends from IBH, um, Jai, Akarina, and Angela. We met through the program, we lived together and we're living together next year in the apartment as well. So um, I have a few other students with us today and we'll hand it over to Akash. Hi everyone, I'm Akash. I'm also a sophomore in IBH. I'm from Germantown, Maryland and I'm a neurobiology major. Some of my involvement, I'm a president and national merit scholar. I'm a sports photographer at the Diamondback for the school. Uh, I play pickleball and tennis. I also volunteer to teach kids math and science at College Park Academy. I'm an animal science research intern at the school. And of course, I'm an IBH Omnis ambassador and peer mentor. Hi, everyone. I'm Ursula. So I'm also a part of cover one. I'm a finance and accounting double major. Um, outside of that, I'm involved in Smith Ambassadors, so if any of you are a Smith major or a prospective uh, Smith major, um, you will see me um, during tours um, or any of the paneling events. Um, I'm also a mentor for Smith. Um, I'm on the Women in Business Exec Board. Um, I'm actually a teaching assistant for the Cohort 2 class this semester, so I'm teaching the um, analysis class for the IBH program. Um, and outside of that, I love to do photography, reading, and I picked up skiing over the winter break. Hi, everyone. Um, 
My name is Nick, and I'm from Delaware, so I'm an out-of-state student at UMD. Uh, so my, I came in as computer science, and I recently added a double major in finance as well. Uh, at UMD, I'm, an, I'm a presidential scholar. I'm on the IBA student board, which helps like dictate dictate uh, like the future of the program because it is very like early in its stages, so it's a very great opportunity. Um, I'm also on the computer science student advisory board and a few other like leadership positions in various clubs at UMD. I'm also in the Alpha Kappa Psi professional business fraternity, which is uh, like sponsored by the Smith School of Business. And um, in terms of hobbies, I like traveling, hiking. Um, that picture uh, with the mountain is from Patagonia. I went last winter and um, swimming, playing sports at UMD um, and going to the beach. And I, if you look at the bottom right picture, actually, that's from the peer mentor program. Um, from IBH, we went to Six Flags, which was a really awesome trip. So, like, there's many opportunities like that, which are great. Hi, everyone. I'm Josh. Um, I'm also part of the sophomore cohort. I'm from Folsom, Maryland. I'm a computer engineering major. I'm a uh, Clark Legacy Scholar and ECE Scholar. That's the electrical and computer engineering department. Um, I'm also part of one of their programs, the Virtually Integrated Projects, uh, Terp Trails. It's an app development thing. Um, I'm an IBH Honors Ambassador, and I'm really into club pickleball and club tennis. So my hobbies are sports, traveling, hiking, video games, and uh, I really like going to the gym. Um, the top right and the bottom left pictures are actually from a recent trip to Vietnam with my family. It's my first time. I really love traveling with my family. It's one of the, my favorite things to do. Hi, everyone. My name is Urja. I'm from Long Island, New York. I'm a philosophy, politics, economics major, or PPE. It's this unique interdisciplinary major that the University of Maryland offers. I am minoring in general business and professional writing. And on campus, I am a presidential scholar. I'm involved in Empowering Women in Law, the Every Child Project. I am also part of the Global Fellows Program. And uh, obviously, I'm also an IBH Honors Ambassador. I'm part of the IBH Student Board and Terps for Change. My hobbies include running, watching movies, playing board games, and building Lego sets. Um, in all of these pictures, I've met my closest friends through this program because I really do think it is a tight-knit community. Great. So... Now that um, we've had a chance to introduce ourselves, we are going to show you guys a bit about Prince Frederick Hall. So currently I am sitting in the lounge and I'll show you the lounge first. And then I think Akash is going to show his dorm so you guys can check out what that looks like as well. So um, I live on the sixth floor. Prince Frederick Hall is sixth and seventh floor. Um, and this is our lounge area. So show it. Um, it's actually really rare that it's this empty at the moment. Usually they're are a lot of people um, in and out of the lounge. I know in the seventh floor lounge last year, they, um, they used to play pickle, I mean, uh, spike ball and a couple other games up there. So you can definitely have some fun here. There's also um, the microwave and sink over that way. So I just washed my dishes over there this morning. And then I'll take you guys down the hall to the study, which is another uh, area on each floor that you can use. Um, usually the study is meant to be more quiet and then the lounge is if you wanna hang out and talk. So during final season, the study definitely gets super busy. Let me turn the light on for you guys. So here's the study. And what I love about this is like the huge windows during the daytime, it's so nice to get that sunlight and there's the whiteboards as well. So. Again, it's pretty rare that it's this empty. I wonder if the seventh floor is busier right now, but anywho, Akash, do you wanna show your dorm? Yeah, sure, thanks Faith. Um, yeah. So we are sophomores, so we live in the sweet side of Prince Frederick. So over here, you can see um, the hall. This is just like an entrance space. We have a shower on one side, our own bathroom on one side. There's Nick. He's also in the Zoom call. Uh, this is our room. I'm not sure if you can see the whole thing, but it's very spacious. It's much bigger than any of the other buildings I've been to on campus. And I also definitely love that there's three other or two other honors programs in our building. DCC is right below us, and then ACES is also below us. So that's definitely interesting. We make friends with all of them. And of course, we're all super close here in IBH. Thanks, Akash. 
So at this time, do we want to open it to questions? Yeah, I think that would be great. We have a few that have come in. And um, the first one I see is asking about examples of the capstone projects that students are doing this semester or the companies that you're working with. So I was wondering if a few of you maybe want to share um, what you selected. Certainly, I can start. So for the capstone project, essentially, you'll be working with a company. Um, this year, it's focused on sustainability or social impact. And you'll be working with them for the entire semester in a team of, um, I think there's five students in my team. Um, so it's really exciting that you get to establish that long-term relationship with them and actually feel like you're making impact. So mine specifically is an organization that's based in DC on Capitol Hill, and it's called Turning the Page. And it's an organization that works with parents to help build home libraries for their children and really make the educational process smoother for children at home. I can explain yeah. mine oh, as well, but do you want to go first? Okay, sure. Uh, adding on to Faith, um, Josh, Nick, and I are actually on the same team. We're working with a bit of a smaller company. I think it's only one guy running his show out of a warehouse. Um, it's called Glass Seed Plant. So he basically recycles glass and makes vases and other types of art with that and puts plants inside. And he's really looking to increase his distribution system, work with the University of Maryland students, and we're going to come up with some ideas and work with him. We actually have our first meeting with him tomorrow. So I am kind of going to be working on a project that's like completely opposite to that. So I'm going to be working for um, me and my group are going to be working for Asylum, which is uh, a public company that is can buy their stock. They already have their IPO and they're looking for analysis with when it comes to their vendor systems. Um, so we have our kickoff meeting on Monday and we'll be working with them over the course of the semester when it comes to like data analysis and optimization um, of their systems. Yeah, and I am working on CQ, which is Maryland's largest credit union company. They also, their name is on the stadium at the University of Maryland, which I find very interesting. Um, I actually had my kickoff meeting today with my team. They're particularly looking into ways to improve their hiring process and actually tailoring it more towards Gen Z, which is something that my group has a lot of experience with within the IBH program, especially our first course, The Future of Work. It's one of the projects we focused on. So I feel super prepared for that. And the meeting went really well. Great. I think what you can see from this in our explanations is that the projects really range. And so when we were put on our teams, we actually got to preference and rank all nine of the different projects. So most people were put on their top choices, which really helps because then you're working on it with a team of students who are all eagerly, uh, who are all equally eager to work on the project. Great, thank you all. Um, I see a question that says, what's your favorite thing about IBH and what's one thing you might want to change? Oh. Okay, I guess I will start. <laughs> so um, the only reason I hesitated was for the second part of the question. I have a lot of things that are my favorite about IBH. So um, I think first and foremost is the community though. And I think other people may say that and you don't believe it, but with IBH, the fact that it's living learning really makes such a difference. So yes, we go to class together and, and my first year we had it at 8 a.m. and we all didn't want to go, but we all did it together. Um, but then you would come back into the dorm and hang out with your friends. And it's really nice to have that community. I think University of Maryland it is a bigger school. So really finding those sub communities can really help with that sense of belonging. Um, so that was definitely my favorite part. Um, something I would change about IBH. Oh, yeah, oh, that's great news. Um, something I would change about IBH. Um, I don't know, I have to come back to that, honestly. I may let some other people go first. Yeah, I can uh, take it off. So I think for the first part, I totally agree with what Faith said about like the community and things like that. Um, like even me, Akash and Josh, like we're all roommates. We're all we're all in the same suite. And um, another like example is like all the time we go to dinner together. And I think living together, it's like a very great opportunity to make friends, especially from my experience, like being out of state. Um, you don't know that many people coming into UMD and like IBH was a really great route for me to like build a community and 
like make new friends like that. I still like the people I first talked to in IBH are still some of my closest friends today. Um, and even like, um, like this, this spring break, for example, we, we planned a trip to go to Puerto Rico with like 13 people in IBH. So um, that's like, that's not really like program sponsored, but that's just like an example of the community in IBH and like us trying to do something fun together. Um, yeah. And in terms of changing stuff, like, I mean, Liz pointed the biggest out thing out with like the 8 a.m. classes in the first year. I know they changed that at this time. Um, so like if you guys chose to join IBH, then that wouldn't be a problem. Um, but yeah, I, I can't really say too much else. I think the program itself is like very like solid and structured and anything that is like changeable, like will be changed because it is so early in the program and there are like routes, like the student board, um, and like other opportunities that the program offers that you can easily like make your mark on the program. Yeah, so I know everyone echoed how IBH is a very tight knit community. I think one of the best things this program offers is like professional development, especially if you're not a business major. It, IBH, I'm not a business major, I'm a philosophy, politics, economics major. It's completely different. And through IBH, I've learned some very important skills and terms that I feel like I wouldn't have otherwise known that I know some people who aren't part of the program aren't aware of. And it helps with getting internships and just things that you don't know that you'll need in your future in any career, any job. I completely agree with that. One thing I would say I would like to change is that I'm so sad that IBH is only two year program. Uh, all of the programs in the Honors College are two years programs with the exception of GEMS, which is a four, years, four year program, but I'm definitely gonna miss working with Dr. Bailey and Liz and Jillian next semester. And seeing them every week is really one of the highlights. We are going to miss you all too much. And I can't believe that you're sophomores and just a reason to stick around IBH and serve as mentors. Cohort three will still see you. Um, thank you all for those kind comments. Uh, Nick, I appreciated the mention of the student board. We definitely are very open to feedback on the program. We know that we're new. We know that um, things don't always go perfectly the first time you try something. And so we're very much listening to the student voice as we you know, move into year two and year three in the fall. So. Um, definitely have those channels open to get feedback. Let's see. What do we look for in applicants who do not have business related majors or experiences? I think I'll take that one real quick. Um, so having prior business experience is absolutely not required to be an IBH. The point of the program is to explore business with people, you know, again, studying all different majors. So everyone's coming with different backgrounds. Um, I would say when you complete your preferencing form and you have an opportunity to write a statement expressing why you're interested in IBH, that is definitely something we look to heavily to understand what your interest is. Um, so I would be sure to express yourself there in terms of why you are interested in pursuing IBH and learning more about business, even if you did not have the opportunity in high school to do that. Um, and also maybe connect it to your intended major and how you want to connect some business um, knowledge with the field you plan to study. So that would be my suggestion there. Um, there was one question about if you are not a business major, maybe it got answered already. Oh, here it is. Does IVH offer opportunities to use non-business skills, i.e. computer science, in a business manner? So I thought maybe Nick could take that one on for us, not to put you on the spot, but you happen to be a CS major. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, the question about, I think... Confusing. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, the things you learn in IBH... Um, are very like applicable in the things that you do so like for example even last semester we had like our last project was working with a company or like choosing a company and seeing how we could like make a toolkit for that and like it was very like student-led in the sense that i know there was a group who um was mainly cs like a lot of cs majors are like technical backgrounds and they chose to do like um code signal which is like a far more tech focused company and they use like their own technical knowledge and ability and skills to like leverage that and um make like recommendations that they think they, they were like most prepared for because it was like an industry that they were very fulfilled, like ready for and fulfilled in. Um, I think another thing is one of the capstone projects this semester, uh, it's like more data science based. So they want people to like analyze data and um, 
and make recommendations based off of that. And I think that's like another really good example of something that maybe you don't learn like fully in business, but you learn more in like something like computer science, um, like data science is a very like is a subset of that. So uh, just things like that. I think there's always more opportunities both for me to bring CS within business and for me to bring like IBH, the skills I learned in IBH to my CS courses and other things like that. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. Um, question for any student is, what are some ways that students contribute to the IBH community? I can take this one. And then if anyone wants to add on. So there are so many ways that IBHers can contribute to the community. So starting with the student board, which you've already spoken about, um, but there's also a peer mentor program that we have. And so um, we're still piloting this, getting it off the ground, figuring out the best way for this to work and look. Um, but you can, if you're older, you can mentor and you can also be a mentee in the program. I think as well as just being an active member in the classroom and in the dorm. So if you see someone in the hall saying hi, I think that goes a really long way of just building that morale and community. So all those ways, and as well as you could even later down the line be a teaching assistant for one of the classes. There are really so many ways now that I'm speaking about it, so. I would yeah. agree, like being a TA is like such a great opportunity, like as a sophomore being able to like connect with the freshmen. Um, it's just like a really good way to both like get a better connection with the professors, with Dr. Bailey, um, as well as just making sure that like you're meeting all the, all the new students um, and you're really there as a resource, like you've been there for a year, you know, a bit more maybe and it's just like you're there if they have any questions um, or if they just want to stop by and ask about housing or really anything else. Yeah I was also going to add on like within the student board there's the programming committee and um, on that I work with Jillian and we specifically have meetings to kind of create this community. We make like extracurricular like just events outside of the classes outside like throughout the weekends we did a bonfire that was open to all of both cohorts and it was very fun and we had s'mores and it's just we're creating these events and so I think it goes as easy as just showing up to these events that we have sometimes located right in the multi-purpose room in Prince Frederick and it's just you just get to talk to everyone yeah and I can think of one last thing to add on to that is being an honors ambassador I think most of us here talking to you right now are through the Honors Ambassadors program. You can do events like this, talk to other people in the program, talk to the Honors College staff. That's just in their way. Thank you all. Um, I have a question specifically for business majors. So it says, if we are business majors in Smith, how many of the IBH classes like content or opportunities will overlap with opportunities we already get as Smith business majors? I'm a business major, so I will also take this one. Um, for me, like the interdisciplinary part of IBH is what really attracted me to it. So the second course is a data course. And while we did SQL for a bit, um, we just talked in the grander scheme about like the ethics of data analytics. So at the time I was only a business, business management major. So I wasn't really familiar with data analytics as much, but that class actually sparked my interest a lot. And I'm actually an information systems major now. So it is impacting me significantly in terms of actually changing my major, but also being able to work with different students. Um, so being in teams with CS students and seeing how they do things differently or just how they think differently has been a really valuable experience. I think I'm the only business major here. Yeah, oh, no. I can, well, I can add a little bit because yeah. I just uh, added a business major. Um, so I haven't taken like probably as many courses as like Faith has, but I will say that, like a lot of the stuff that you learn in IBH is not, it's not necessarily like overlapping. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Um, there's some like things that like Faith said, like dig into a little bit of the business majors and like the other courses that Smith offers. But I think a lot of it is like very like current, like the current time period. And you're looking at things like what is going on in the world of business right now and how is that like ap applicable to work or like data and things like that um and how can we apply that within like our, our own work experience later on 
And those are like some skills that I don't think are, are, are directly addressed in um business classes at the Smith School so far, at least. I know there's like uh, like upper levels, there's like more capstone type courses, but like at least the introductory business courses don't teach you things like that. So I say that's like, it's pretty valuable in that sense. Great. Uh, question I'll take, are the five curriculum courses the only courses necessary for honors? So if you are in the IBH program, then yes, those five courses that we showed and talked about are the academic requirements to complete the program and earn the IBH um, Honors College citation on your transcript. Uh, the gen ed requirements, are, yes, are the same uh, for honors and non-honors students. So the campus for every undergraduate student has one set of gen ed requirements. Um, as I mentioned, the first three courses in the IBH sequence do have gen ed credit. The first two count for scholarship and practice and I-series. That might not mean anything to you right now. That's perfectly fine. You'll learn about it once you're on campus and looking at your curriculum. And the third course counts for one of the diversity gen ed requirements, understanding plural uh, societies. Um, there is a question that says... Why did you choose IBH? Would anyone else like to start on this question? Maybe Josh, I don't think we've heard from you. Uh, yeah, I could take that. Um, I chose IBH specifically for the interdisciplinary portion, basically. Um, in the same dorm, there is the ACES program, which would be more in line with the computer engineering major that I am. But um, I just really liked uh, the fact that we can, or that I can speak to people with other perspectives. I think perspective is a big deal. Um, from what, speaking to other people in my major, they don't really have any experience with um, talking to actual businesses or look, look, looking for uh, internships and stuff like that in a, like a business setting. So I think IBH is like perfect for teaching you about that. I would completely agree with that. I did, I come to college to learn about other perspectives and talk to a diverse amount of people. Um, I wasn't really trying to just stick. I'm a bio major. I wasn't trying to talk to the bio majors, come back to my dorm and talk to bio majors. It's great to kind of understand the the diversity and the interdisciplinary aspect of IBH. Yeah, and I can add on a little bit. I think as a CS major, I was pretty torn between like ACES and IBH. Um, I mean, I think ACES like is like the go-to honors program, like typically for a CS major because it is very focused on that field. But I think another like if similar to what Akash said, um, if you're in a program like that, you're not really you're kind of experiencing only one side of the world uh, in a sense because like business is present in everything, even if like you're not necessarily a business major. Like any company you work at is going to be like business is going to be a big part of that um, and knowing things about business and how the world works and how the world is changing, especially is very helpful in any field like that. And I think, again, like the interdisciplinary nature, just to renounce that again, uh, renounce that is very like helpful in terms of talking to different people who have different perspectives and meeting new people and meeting people that you probably wouldn't have been introduced to before. And I think another thing about college is that it's like one of the very last times in your life before you get to work where you get to try out so many new things and uh, meet so many new people and like just have new experiences. So it was, I would like from my personal experience, I definitely like completely am 100% on board with like my decision to choose IBH over ACEs. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, there were two main reasons. The first being kind of echoing what everyone said, that interdisciplinary aspect of it. Um, I knew going in that I wanted to do consulting and consulting, you are usually put on a team with not everyone has the same background um, and even the clients are diverse. So I wanted to really learn how to work with different people from different backgrounds. And I think the second thing that really attracted me to IBH versus another honors college was how like the program was new. So we were a part of the inaugural cohort and that that really excited me because I knew that as long as we all cared enough and the faculty cared enough, which they absolutely do, that we would be able to make changes and make this a really great program. And even though it's, by the time you'll be joining, it's not the inaugural cohort year, it's still very, very young and there's still so much to change. So that opportunity still exists for you. And I think it's a really exciting one.
Excellent. Thank you all. Uh, Faith, while you're here, I have a question specifically for you. To the student who is also in Quest, why are you in both? And what are you getting in Quest that you don't get in IBH and vice versa? Absolutely. Yeah. So I am also in Quest. And um, the reason why I applied to Quest was because I, it was a lot of similar reasons, actually. Like Quest is that interdisciplinary focus. You do get to work with a client, um, even though I didn't know that about IBH going in. But I think something that I get from IBH that I don't get from Quest is one, the living learning aspect of it. So that community, um, Quest is just classes that you go to and you don't really see everybody afterward. Um, and then another thing about IBH versus Quest is I think the coursework is a bit more discussion-based and I guess more conceptual rather than all technical stuff, which is really nice. Some of the concepts that we talked about in in like the earlier IBH classes, um, like gen practices for hiring Generation Z or um, ESG or sustainability, just all of that is really relevant stuff to learn how to talk about in business and becoming fluent in that. And especially during the interview process really served me well. So I would say IBH had that community and that conceptual side where Quest gives me a little bit more of the technical stuff, um, but it's still that team-based learning. So they do have that common ground as well. So they definitely complement each other really well. Um, and it's, something that they're still learning and exploring because IBH, again, is still new. So we're figuring out how does it overlap with Quest? What's the best way to support those programs and how can they complement one another? So it's an ongoing process is what I'm trying to say. They're currently conducting focus groups on that very idea of what's it like being in both. So again, so much opportunity to make change in for the future. Yes, thank you for that. Um, just for logistical details, I'll also say IBH uh, students join as incoming freshmen and it's freshman and sophomore year and Quest uh, students apply as freshmen to start in the sophomore year and it's sophomore, junior and senior year. So different time frames for those two programs. Um, I will say that this semester we had a team of Quest students do a project for IBH. So they consulted for us uh, to help us explore uh, kind of the aspect of citations in IBH and the course sequence. And so that was really neat to combine the two programs for that purpose. So there's definitely a lot of collaboration across the two communities. Uh, moving to the next topic, I see three or four questions here that are all asking about internships. So does IBH help find internships or is that on the student? Um, what percentage of freshmen who seek internships get one and take the experiential learning credit? for the reflection class? Um, how is IBH useful in terms of academic and professional experiences like internships? So maybe everyone can just spend a minute talking about internship journeys and what that's looked like for you all. Sure, I will start. Um, so IBH does a great job with professional development and that's what Urja was highlighting earlier. Um, IBH is not going to specifically hold your hand and say, here's this intern opp internship opportunity designed specifically for you. And if you apply, they'll say yes. Um, nothing works like that, unfortunately, but there are tons of resources and the community is really, really helpful. So all of my friends have internships and we would all constantly be talking to each other. Hey, did you talk to this person? If you're interested here, talk to this person. Um, this is how you should be writing a resume. I mean, I had my resume reviewed by so many people in IBH and they re and, and I reviewed theirs or give and take relationship. And um, I did have an internship my freshman year. I'm going back to the same place again um, next year. It's a consulting firm in DC. Um, and yeah, I would say, so like the professional development, the content in the classroom really prepares you. Um, I can even think of during specific interviews where I've actually referenced projects that I've done in IBH or concepts that we've talked about in the IBH class. So even the curriculum is incredibly relevant to the whole um, internship application process. Yeah. And I think just to expand that, I think Faith really hit the nail on the head there. But um, I think just to re like reaffirm that statement where it's not necessarily like, things you learn in IBH, you don't really learn elsewhere, like as focused as you do in IBH or talk about in IBH. And I think like interviewing, especially as like a CS major, because um, I'm trying to be like a software engineer. Um, I think within like the CS degree at UMD, there's not as many opportunities for like teamwork, team uh, teamwork or, or like group projects and things like that. And I think being an IBH gives you like a great answer to certain like questions, like tell me about a time when you worked in a team or like spearheaded a project that you were in a team you worked on. 
um, those like experiences in IVH have been very like easier for me to talk about because you live through them and like they're real, like they actually happened. And again, like what they said, like uh, you learn a lot about DEI and ESG and things like that in IVH. And I think those like those are like some key words I think in an interview. It's like make you stand out because they're very new topics, and I think it shows that like you're up like with like the present in terms of like what the world is going what the world is going to and what's it like it's focusing on especially in the business field um so that's very like helpful and yeah um yeah so like i like last summer i had a smaller internship um at, at a regional healthcare company as a software engineer and um and and then i after that i took the internship class which was a great experience you like reflect a lot and like you take it it's usually like a smaller class that what well, at least when i took it that was the first time it's been offered um, it was like a class of like eight to 10 students and uh, you work pretty closely together. It's not like the largest time commitment, but it is very fun and it is like very like reflective and it's a great experience. I'd recommend that. Um, yeah. And then when once you get your first internship, like the, the rest usually like are, are much easier. But yeah, IBH is definitely very helpful in terms of getting your name out there and like having things to talk about, like to secure an internship. Yeah, I definitely Thanks. agree with that. I IBH is more of a resource. They're not going to hold your hand and hand you an internship. But Liz has definitely written a plethora of recommendation letters for me, which have definitely helped. And currently, I work at UMD. I have an internship at UMD. And then this coming summer, I'm going to be working at NIH and then also at Shady Grove Hospital. So I think Faith is right. I don't really know anyone in IBH without an internship set up for this summer. So it's definitely um, a big part of your college experience. I would say being in IBH like gives you access to opportunities that you can talk about at interviews. Um, I went with Liz to Nebraska uh, for a case competition, um, and I've definitely talked about that in interviews. Now I'm a teaching assistant, um, and different the different projects that you work on in all the classes, um, they give you just so much material to talk about when you're uh, doing interviews. I was working this summer at the Department of Justice. Um, I'm still working there. Um, I was working there last semester and I'm going to still work um, this semester and already have my internship lined up for this summer. Um, and it's really just like you have so many resources when it comes from Jillian, Liz, um, Dr. Bailey, and they're really all there to help you when it comes to navigating kind of the business world. Thank you all for sharing those experiences. Um, I know there was one question specifically asking about the internship reflection course, and Nick mentioned it was smaller. We offered it for the first time this past fall since cohort one was returning as sophomores. I anticipate it will grow as we move forward. Um, some of those sophomores may take it next fall, and then some of the rising sophomores may also enroll. Um, so steady state, we're not sure yet, but any IBH student is welcome. Um, and I've definitely written a lot of recommendation letters, as was mentioned. So we may not hand internships out in IBH, but we're absolutely here to support students uh, as references, as letter of recommendation writers, you know, whatever it might be. Um, we also have networks that we can connect students to. So absolutely, there are resources, as the students mentioned. Um, let's see. I know we only have a few minutes left, so I'm just looking if there's anything we haven't gotten to. Um, Question about entrepreneurial support. Yes, there's absolutely lots of that on campus at UMD. IBH is not specifically an entrepreneurial program, but we do have students who are pursuing their own startup ideas. So that is part of our community. Um, here's one about the public speaking. There was a mention of public speaking. How does IBH help with it? Um, so that's part of the course content. So the projects that happen in the courses, and we do a lot of framework and help in the first course before the first presentation and then before the second presentation. And we provide feedback to the students following each round of presentations. So we kind of build that into what they're doing in the classroom. And then we typically have special guests for the third round of presentations in the classes. Um, in the past, we've had the executive director of the Honors College join us. So other campus colleagues who can come in and see what the students are doing in IBH and provide some outside perspective feedback as well. Um, and I think we have covered most of it. I think we have like one minute left. Does any student want to provide like a favorite, most favorite moment or favorite memory in IVH before we close out? Um, I will say, like, I guess 
there's so many but um one thing like one way that we really started connecting like at least on my floor on the seventh we used to, I was on the seventh floor and in my freshman year um we started playing spike ball in the lounge um like in our floor like in the area where faith is and that was really fun because it helped gather like everyone together on the floor for the like one of the it was like one of the first days so it was like one of the first like breaking the ice I guess and like starting like lifelong friendships that I still have today so and we keep doing that like to this day so that's like a great that was a great example of something Yeah, I agree with Nick. I think living with everyone was definitely a great help from transitioning from, I came from a pretty small high school, coming here to a big college can be kind of daunting, but everyone, you have friends down the hall, you have friends in the dorms below you. It's just a totally great experience. I think on that note, we will close it out. I'm just going to quickly share a reminder that the deadline for the preferencing form is February 19th. And then I wanted to put this on the screen for just a second here. If you do have further questions, you're welcome to reach out to our team. We'd be happy to chat with you or connect you with an IBH student. Um, our email address is ibh at umd.edu. Uh, our phone number is here. And we also have an Instagram account where some of our students do takeovers and things. You can look at some of the experiences we've had at ibh underscore umd. So. Um, with that, thank you so much for joining us on behalf of Jillian, myself, all of our students. Really excited to have you tonight and best of luck as you make your decisions. We hope you'll join us in the fall and we'll see you then. Thank you so much, guys. Um, thank you um, for our students who um, were able to stay on and answer questions for our admitted students. And thanks again. Um,